Uh, what about you, Stephen? Oh, I think I'll be supporting MMP. Um, although, I, I mean, I, I sort of agree with Guy uh, that, that there can be changes made to MMP uh, that would potentially improve it. OK, yeah. very good. Now, um, what else did you want to talk about, um, Stephen? What else is you know, going to excite you in Parliament? What, do you, what else do you want to really push should you become a parliamentarian? Uh, so, so we've talked about it a little bit. One of my real passions, yeah. I have to say, is education. Um, and mainly because there's, there's no thing that will change the future course of New Zealand more than getting our education system right. Uh, and some New Zealanders receive excellent state education. Uh, and other New Zealanders actually receive very poor state education. Uh, and it tends to be that those who receive the best uh, actually come from we wealthy families rather than the poorest. And I, so I think we need to get our education system right. So you'd like to be uh, a Minister of Education, ideally, in an ACT government? Oh, I mean, that would be great. I think there's a lot of, lot of room uh, to move in education. Um, so not just the sort of, uh, not just the sort of voucher system, uh, I mean, that's part of it. But, you know, making more information available to parents so that they can make those choices for their kids uh, is also something that's particularly important. Uh, and the Ministry actually has a website at the moment called School Smart, which all teachers and the bureaucrats in the Ministry of Education can access. And it compares schools across 20 different indicators. So the, school, the, the performance of the pupils in the school, the turnover of the teachers. Okay. Uh, and, and Bill English, when he was National uh, Education spoke, Spokesman, tried to open that uh, website up mm. by getting the official information uh, from the Ministry, and they refused. Now, they've had three years to open that up, and they, and they haven't. So there's a lot, a lot we could do in education to make uh, our education fairer, our education system fairer for everyone. Okay, what about you two? What would you like to be Minister of? <laughs> um, actually, I would like to be Minister of Education. Sorry, the Marvel with the support yeah, exactly. competition in the yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> I have no real political ambitions, but uh, if I, honestly, if I was going to be in government, I'd rather go all the way and be Deputy Prime Minister. Mm. <laughs> What's wrong with Prime Minister? Well, it's kind of a small party at the moment. We've got a wee ways to <laughs> <laughs> okay. Before we can sort of make Be it realistic, where we agree perhaps. Okay. So, out campaigning, what local issues are you guys focusing on in terms of Dunedin? Um, for me in the north, it's economy and jobs, and uh, obviously. Uh, what, uh, how, how, how ACT can actually help uh, young people coming out from university, especially uh, Dunedin being uh, a very uh, key university town, um, so want to stay in New Zealand and uh, or if they're going overseas as they do, um, hope that they come back uh, to uh, something better than they've had or something similar uh, overseas. Uh, Dunedin South is similar but with a different focus. Um with Dunedin South is a poor electorate. It's not. It's not a wealthy one. I mean, we've got areas like Waverley, but um, as a whole, there's really high, there's high unemployment, particularly high youth unemployment. And I think South Dunedin is the kind of place people feel they're almost trapped in at the moment. And I think a thriving South Dunedin economy um, would really help people gain a sense of I can do this. I can make it. Like I can do something with my life. I can make it out of what has become South Dunedin or what South Dunedin has become. Okay, very good. Any other questions from the audience or from the Twitter sphere, Fran? Um, there was a question for Guy. How do you act when you're hard? <laughs> uh, actually, I, um, I actually used to be uh, what I would call a democratic socialist a long time ago. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, it's a guilty secret, actually, but, uh, but now everyone knows it. Uh, <laughs> but um, slowly I actually started drifting to the centre and, um, and I found myself thinking, you know, do tax credits help people make the right decisions? The private sector does things a lot more efficiently. And slowly I started realising that I was actually beginning to think like a national voter. And I started keep, kept on drifting further, further to the right. Um, and there was a point where I was actually supporting the Libertarians, and then I got serious and started supporting ACT. <laughs> okay, so we've got two Libertarian sympathetic um, mm -hmm. candidates here. What about you? Are you sympathetic to the Libertarians, or you just think they are just completely off the planet? Uh, I, I'd say I mean, I'm fairly sympathetic uh, to the Libertarians. I think I think the reality is is that. You can actually balance uh, the, the sort of thing that, that they want to achieve with ensuring better outcomes and fairer outcomes for, for uh, a lot more people. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do actually think that the ACT Party uh, will create a fairer New Zealand, and I agree with a lot of 
uh, what you know the Greens and Labour talk about in terms of what they, what kind of New Zealand they want to live in. So ACT or the Social Justice Party, they just really mean it, rather that they can really do it. Well, I mean, the, the difference is is that is that we're not economically illiterate about how we want to do it. So take minimum wages for example. Yeah. You know, they say that will boost wages. The reality is is all the studies show that when Labour got rid of youth rates, it drove youth out of jobs. Uh, and so they say they care, but what they're actually doing is denying people the opportunity to uh, have a job and instead having them collecting the unemployment benefit. Uh, so things like that, where we agree with them in their aims, we do want people receiving better wages, we just have an actually economically rational way to achieve it, uh, is the difference between ACT and the parties of the left. OK, just on that issue before we finish up, um, inequality then. So do you think we should have a, a less or more um, unequal society. How bad is inequality? Oh, I think inequality is, seri is, is a serious issue. Um, and, and, you know, if you, look at, if you look at the policies that Labour and the Greens support, you know, they're not actually going to reduce inequality. Okay. So if you take, uh, take, take tertiary education, for example, the reality is, is the people who go to university tend to come from okay. the middle and upper class. They so want to increase the subsidies to them. So they want to force uh, the people on minimum wages working you know, two jobs to make ends meet, to pay taxes, so to go the, to the future yeah. doctors and lawyers. So ACT are the real party of uh, reducing inequality, is that what you're saying? Well, well we want to re reduce inequality in a way that, that will actually reduce inequality rather than supporting policies that would increase inequality and, and pretending that we're doing the, uh, the opposite. OK, and just to totally finish up, some predictions for the election outcome. Oh, I think it's very clear that, that National will form the next government. With over 50 per cent of the vote? No, no, absolutely not. I mean, I think, I think in the last three and a half weeks of the election, what the public's going to realise is if National are near that, they're going to end up probably below it. Uh, and if that's not there, they're going to be beholden to parties like the Maori Party and the Green Party. Uh, and if you want a national government that's actually going to reduce government expenditure, reduce taxes, then you can only do it by Party Voting Act. And so I think ACT is going to, to increase in polls over the next three and a half weeks. I think we'll uh, have strong ACT representation in the next parliament, uh, and that will be with the national... Okay, government. what about the Green Party? How well will they do, and is there any chance of a Green National Coalition, do you think? Uh, so I think the Green Party will do very well, and that's mainly because, uh, you know, La Labour aren't actually painting a vision uh, that many people want, that in the far too close to national, national is far too close to them. Uh, in terms of the possibilities of a, of a Green National Coalition, uh, I don't think there'll be a, a formal coalition, but I think, you know, if, if National can go to the Greens to get support, uh, they will. Uh, and that's why you need a strong counter-influence there, because if, if, they, if they can always go to the Green Party, mm. then that government expenditure, which is already a problem, is just going to increase even further. OK, and finally, Guy and Kim, any election predictions uh, across the nation and in, in, in Dunedin? In Dunedin, uh, specifically, I think it's going to be uh, a fairly cro close race. Uh, David Clark is not an incumbent, and he's relatively new to the Dunedin political scene. So uh, the Michael Woodhouse has actually been he here acting uh, as, as an MP, uh, an electorate MP, but rather being a list. Mm -hmm. So he's actually done a lot of the hard yards. And I think uh, with Matidia Tude as well in this electorate, it's actually going to put uh, Woodhouse ahead a bit. So okay, well, that's I, I think, quite I think a bold prediction. We'll yeah, see. I, I think so, but, but I think it might play out that way. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, and, and, and nationwide, I think National is going to be going to hold plurality in the House, mm -hmm. uh, but it's definitely going to need an act presence. And, um, and I think uh, maybe it would, would range between three and six seats, worst, worst and best scenario, I think. Okay, and Kim? Um, I actually agree with Guy's prediction for uh, sort of the national government, but um, I, I, I completely agree with what he said about Michael Woodhouse as well. I think it's Michael Woodhouse's year in North Dunedin mm. if it's ever going to be. Um, I think Jo Hayes in South Dunedin is a fantastic candidate and she's mm. really good quality and she would be an excellent representative, right. but I do think Claire Curran as an incumbent and a really well-established figurehead will probably be. Um, St. Donate and South, the Electorate MP this election. OK, thanks for your predictions and thanks for coming along. Thanks, no, uh, thanks Pleasure Guy and Stephen. Thanks. Thank you.